This is Chief Inspector Jack Pachuda of MysteriesOnTheNet.com. I'm in the dining room of the Brumder Mansion in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in front of the Tiffany Fireplace. And we've talked about several things in constructing the perfect murder mystery party. Now's the time to talk about the suspect relationships. Here's what I mean by that. When you are putting together the roles for the suspects, no one suspect can have enough information to enable that suspect or the people that suspect talks to to solve the case. What you have to do is piecemeal the information. It's like a big pie and you cut that pie into pieces and each of the suspects gets a piece of the pie because part of the gamesmanship of a good murder mystery party is to put those pieces back together to put it into one big hole, one big pie. So no suspect, not even one of your suspects, can have enough information on their own to solve the case. And the second thing is this, and it's based upon real life. The suspects have various degrees of knowledge about each other. Think about your own personal life. There are some people that you know extremely well. You know a lot about them. They may be your best friends. They may be people that you see all the time. You know a lot about them. Then you have acquaintances, people that you see, oh, infrequently or hardly ever at all, but you know something about them. And it's very possible that they are a minor celebrity, somebody in the community that people know about. So you know a little bit about those people. And there are some people that you know nothing about or maybe just a tiny fraction about. Maybe it's what you read in the newspaper. That's life. So what you do is you develop a scenario, you develop a routine when you are putting together your, your mystery whereby each suspect knows a lot about certain people, knows a little about some other people, and knows maybe nothing at all about certain of the other suspects. And then, something very important, make several surprise relationships. You gotta be kidding me. No, I'm not kidding you. Because surprises are good when you are trying to solve a murder mystery. In fact, surprises are great. Popping things up in the middle of a mystery help create a lot of intrigue, a lot of suspense. For instance, there could be someone who was put in an orphanage early on in life. We've talked about this before, who comes back later in life. We didn't know who it was. And suddenly that person makes an appearance. Maybe it's a war buddy. Somebody who either knew the victim or knew the perpetrator of the crime or maybe someone who had a little plastic surgery and maybe that person doesn't look the way that they, they used to look. Something has happened in their life. They've changed their names. They've gotten a brand new life and they come back and they are someone else. It's also possible that for instance, someone got married and the family didn't approve of the husband. The family thinks that husband died but he didn't die. He stayed married and became the second husband of the same person. So suddenly that person, even though we think it's a different individual, is the same individual as the first husband. There are lots of different surprise relationships you can create. A good murder mystery has surprise relationships, things you didn't anticipate. Now, you might allude to them in the plot, you might have people say things that would imply they are there, but it's not until the questioning occurs that those things are verified. Now, and this is an important point, some people think that when you are writing a murder mystery party, one of the first things you identify is the killer, the perpetrator of the crime. Not so. It's about at this point that I really figure out who did it. And even then I'm not totally sure because it's only at this point where I have all the relationships down and I have a lot of the dynamics in place that I start to realize who the best killer would be. So right about now is when you want to start getting an idea of who makes the most sense as the perpetrator of the crime. And even then it could change because right until the very end, you could change who did it. So those are the four key points about the suspect relationships. And those things, if you tie them all together, create the intrigue, the mystery, and all of that mayhem that you're looking for in a good murder mystery. In the next segment, we'll continue.